Hello everybody and welcome back to part 35 of our Trumpeter 1200 scale HMS hood build. This week I'm going to carry on where we left off uh, in part 34 building the ship's boats. Uh, but this week uh, I've got a short week in terms of time in the shed building the model. So I'm going to focus attention on just one of the boats. It's the 35 foot uh, Admiral's Barge. It was one of the three 35 foot fast motor boats on hood but it was converted and modified so the cabin arrangement is quite different to the other two motor boats and it was unique to the ship so i'm going to focus on that and get that one done it's quite an interesting color scheme on this it's navy blue and white according to the hms hood association with a rich red deck on it so so I think when it's uh, all painted up, it should look quite interesting and quite different to some of the other boats on the on the ship. So we're going to get over to the bench. We'll get the trumpeter part uh, for the hull cut out, get all the Pontos etched brass parts cut out as well, and we'll make a start on that boat. So this is trumpeter part D2, which is the only piece of plastic that we need for this uh, particular boat. Just to give you an idea what it will look like, that's the trumpeter cabin arrangement. It's a little bit different to the uh, Pontos. So we'll get those parts out uh, now. There's quite a few parts. These boats are quite a bit more complicated than the open boats that we made last week uh, and the week before. So uh, they just need a bit more care with them really. So for this particular one we have a deck, this is the uh, after cabin and on my example uh, the brass part has broken, the roof has come away which uh, is this part here it should sit like that but the connection point between the two parts of the brass is very very thin and that's just snapped off on my particular example so it shouldn't be a problem though we should be able to sort that out. And uh, a front cabin. This is the back benches for the stern of the boat. And we have a screen for the uh, pilot's position. There are one or two other detail parts, but I'm not going to remove those yet. We want to get these uh, main parts prepared first. And finally we have the bottom boards, which is this part here. First thing I want to do is work on these cabins. So I'll do the larger of the two first. This is quite a complex part. There's quite a few bends to make on it. So it's important to try and get the correct order for making the bends first thing I'm going to do is get the roof line done so that involves uh, these two little bends at the side to get some pitch on the roof and then the bulkhead sides fold directly down Normally I'll use these uh, short nose bending pliers but in this particular example I need to bridge over this part at the back so that will just help me do that with these longer nose ones. The Pontos instructions for this little back bulkhead here just inside uh, are wrong. It's telling us to bend these down all the time. And all that would do is wrap these two bottom bends underneath. Whereas actually what we've got in this second bend is the makings of a bench. So that's uh, actually should be marked on the Pontos instructions as an upward bend. So you might be able to see inside here the uh, bench 
sitting just inside the uh, aft side of the cabin. So we just want to get this structure in the correct position, ready to solder it up. Having got the rear sides in place, I can now just finish off and get the bench in the correct position. Okay, so that's the aft side of the cabin nice and secure. I just want to check this cabin for fit. because they do tend to be a little bit tight and sometimes if uh, the bulkhead joins uh, are just a little bit out it's enough to stop them fitting in and we need to just do some uh, filing to get the part to fit properly. So that's just a touch wide but uh, at least it's a strong assembly. These are my uh, disgrace of a uh, needle file. I made a mistake last week and got some water on the bench and these were standing in them so they've gone uh, a bit rusty. So uh, I'm going to have to give them a bit of a clean up but I'm going to have to press this into service as it is. I'll be uh, glazing these cabins with some acetate like I did with the launch that I did last week. The acetate worked really well. Someone suggested that I used um, crystal clear for these windows which is possible to use but in my experience <laughs> trying to get a neat finish on a very thin piece of brass there's very little for the crystal clear to grip onto. Uh, so I'm just worried that using crystal clear I'd end up putting too much on and it would start to look a bit messy. So I have some very very thin, it's really cellophane I suppose, it's from uh, some etched brass parts, it's the packaging from some etched brass parts and it came out really well on the launch. All you need really is just something to reflect the light back at you and give the impression that these openings are glazed. The other problem with these being a tight fit is that when we come to paint them I paint the cabins separately to the decks uh, and that's just to get a nice neat finish. The problem is that the layer of paint that you apply often obstructs the fit so we're just going to have to be careful not to apply too much paint to the cabin otherwise we're going to spoil the fit again so that's gone in but with a coat of primer and a coat of paint on that it's likely that it'll tighten up again. I'm just very carefully taking a little bit of material off the sides here. Not too much but I want the cabin to be a drop fit. I don't want to be having to force it otherwise all it's going to do is scrape the paint up the side of the cabin and it's going to look a mess so it's just worth spending a bit of time on these parts at this stage. We'll do this back cabin now. So this has these board seats on the inside but I think what I'm going to do is make the folds to the cabin sides first and then ease the boards in from the front.
and then I can close the front of the uh, cabin around. That's the theory anyway. So that's the bottom board and it slides into a groove. And actually that gives us the shape, the, the side bulkheads of this cabin are not parallel. They splay out a little bit and these and that bench just gives us that correct angle. So I'm going to attempt to get that soldered. I think that's in. Yeah. So you can see the splay of that bench has just forced the cabin into the correct shape. This iron, by the way, it's a Hakko 888 and the tip on it is a one millimeter horseshoe tip. So you need a fairly fine tip to get into some of these little brass parts. From memory, Hakko also do a half millimeter which I may invest in at some stage. Even the one millimetre is quite tight for a, a join like this when you're trying to get the iron tip into that space underneath the bench. It's amazing how much strength that little bench seat gives to these parts. So that's the front bulkhead. As you remember, I broke the roof off this, so I'm going to have to fix that in place as well. I've just noticed actually there's some ribs on the inside. That isn't uh, planking detail, it's to help you make a very gentle bend on the roof. So with a um, just a little hole punch there. I've put a slight bend on that. So let's try and get this roof back on. What I want to try and do is solder it from at the outside at the front and then I'll just go back inside and seal the sides up. What I'm after here is getting the overhang of the roof the same on both sides. All cleaned up that's the aft cabin when I've dry fitted these cabins it actually turns out that the two are joined together so rather than leave them apart I'm going to solder those together now and then I'm more guaranteed to get them exactly in the right place just get some flux onto that So now we know that those parts are perfectly lined up. The windows at the front there are parallel uh, with the deck just in front. The thing with this is not to leave any solder on the sides here. Uh, otherwise it will just obstruct the uh, deck going over the top. Again with those uh, cabins together, I just want to check the fit again. So I'm still inclined to take a little bit off the sides of this deck, just the edges here, just to enable this cabin to slip in a little easier. The trouble with that is that it's quite fragile to file. 
and I'm frightened of bending it so I need to just grip the edges in these long nose pliers and that's just so that I can get the file in without distorting it I think that's okay now so with the deck in place it's possible just to slide the cabins down into the deck I think I'll assemble it so that this bottom board isn't glued and when I push the cabins down they should rest on the bottom boards and should straighten them up at least that's the theory so just pushing down on the cabins it just leveled up the bottom boards okay so I think that's the way to assemble this the last thing I want to do is just make the windscreen up for the cockpit the shape of this screen needs to just conform with the shape at the front of the deck here. So that's the sort of bend that I'm aiming for. And we just need to eyeball this. Okay, that's it. And then we'll just gently bend the screens as well to the same sort of shape so the screens just angled back ever so slightly I might just uh, solder that just to strengthen it Right, so that uh, little screen is cleaned up. I just want to bend the pivot for the wheel, which I'll add later. If I put it on now, there's sure chances that it's going to get broken, so I'll leave it off just for the time being. So eventually this windscreen will just fit in the front here, like that, after it's been painted. Now that we've got the deck how we want it, I can bend these fair leads up now. I'm just a bit bothered about this bottom board. It just seems a little bit high and that's going to stop the uh, cabin sitting at the right height so I might just take off a little bit of that as well just to at the edge just to ease it further down into the hull of the boat that's a much better fit now the cabins are sitting down where they should be and the windscreen just needs to push the bottom edge of the uh, bottom boards down a little bit but that'll be fine we'll get that to fit when we come to glue it all together we need to fit the prop shafts onto the uh, bottom of these and remove the single rudder in the middle so that's these parts which need to be folded in half the thing when you bend in these parts through 180 degrees and they're etched like that so you get the detail on the rudder on both sides but the important thing is to make sure that the brass is completely joined all the way along if not uh, the gaps get shown up by the primer and it just doesn't look very tidy so just make sure that the parts close properly and it's also worth just running along the edge just with a file just to make sure that it's sealed up properly I'm 
just get a bit of glue on those. Just the last bit of prep on these is just to put some uh, neat Mr. Surfacer on this sprue gate at the back on the transom because on all of these plastic holes that sprue gate on the back is quite prominent so it just needs to be treated just a bit of Mr. Surfacer when we sand that down it will be uh, perfectly smooth. It's just worth doing, the sprue gates underneath doesn't matter so much but um, we need to do the transoms on these. The uh, last thing to do with these cabins before I prime them is just to put the rails along the cabin roof. So there are uh, one on each side of each cabin. To fix these little parts I just want to tack them into position with some medium super glue and I just glue it at one end. If I try and get glue all the way along these parts they're just going to stick to the tweezers and we're getting a right old mess if we start doing that. So the medium CA just locates the railing and then when it's where we want it to be I can just go in with some of this super thin CA and that wicks all the way along the joint So you can see those railings along the top and obviously when that's primed the primer will help seal them as well so that part's ready. So that's all the parts for the 35 foot Admiral's barge. got the uh, rails on the top of the cabins there and I've just added a couple of bollards onto the uh, deck of the boat there. It's pretty difficult to see them they're only a millimetre or so long. Just see those t-shaped bollards towards the back just near the tweezers. and they're just positioned by leaving some of the fret connection point on those parts so that they push through the deck and then I just attach them with some thin super glue on the underside so that they don't uh, the glue doesn't show at all. So that's it that can all go away ready for priming while I'm waiting for this primer to dry I just want to get the rest of the parts ready. So there's just the wheel and the crutches to do. So there's the wheel. And like we did with the other boats I'm going to be using the trumpeter crutches. So we have to refer back to uh, step 12 in the trumpeter instructions to get the right uh, set of crutches and in this case the 35 foot admiral's barge fits in this position here just to the port side of the uh, main mast so we want D31, 32 and 33 Now as before 
because the trumpeter parts fitted into slots on the plastic deck we've got to remove those tabs at the bottom side so that they'll just fit and sit on the wooden deck as I did last week I'm going to use these little braces from the Pontos set to add to these crutches and it just adds a little bit of detail to them to do that I just need to drill a little hole for the uh, brass to fit into and when I take these off the fret I'm just going to leave uh, a stub of the fret and that just gives a little bit of extra brass uh, to fit into the hole to get a good glue surface these crutches do have a front and a back the pads on top have got a slight slope on them to accommodate the uh, underside of the hull it's very small the difference is hardly noticeable but the struts that we're going to be fitting now fit to one side so we want to fit them to the we want to fit them to the right side and in this case the holes need to be drilled on this face I don't really want to go all the way through it's not it's not absolutely desperate if we do that's all we need to do it's just enough to uh, get a little bit of glue surface in there that's all it needs this is the aft crutch which has the little slots in it to go over the prop shafts so again that's the front face so the, that's all the holes drilled I can fit, fit the braces now and again we've just got to get the correct ones from the Pontos set they're all slightly different lengths to accommodate the different size crutches so that's the piece of fret that I've left on the end I like to use thick CA for this you just end up getting a bit of a blob of the CA on the end of the part and that fills the hole up nicely And then I'll just sit that down on the mat and position the struts so that they're going down to the deck. Right, so those are the three crutches. They're all ready for painting. And because uh, the bottom of this boat is white, and the crutches are grey, I'm going to have to paint them separately and then fit the crutches afterwards. All the parts for this boat are ready for painting now. So I'll be doing the bottom boards in tan. I'll be doing the top deck in a richer uh, red-brown colour. The cabins will be white and the boat itself, the hull, will be uh, navy blue, dark navy blue with a white bottom. So quite a bit of uh, painting to do and once the main colours are on we can come back and do the detail painting afterwards once the boat's assembled. So I need to mask off the waterline on these now. So with these I want to start the masking on this bottom strake here. I just want the tape to sit along the strip at the bottom, the rubbing strip, for a good length of the whole side and then I'll just drop it off nearer to the bow. And now you've got the job of making the same line on the other side.
which makes the job a bit harder. So we're obviously aiming for the tape on this side. Just start to drop the tape off round about there. Just want a little straight piece across the transom bottom. And then once we've got the waterline I can start to fill in It's uh, worth being thorough with these uh, boats when you're masking them off. It's really annoying when you've got the white just as you want it and then you come to paint the blue, unmask it and find that the blue's crept in. A tiny little gap there just at the front. I think that'll do it. The difficulty with these is masking around the propeller shafts because you don't want to uh, stick the tape down too hard uh, otherwise you may break the delicate brass off. Okay so that's ready for the navy blue. It's worth spending some time on that. Uh, the contrast between the white and the blue is very strong obviously so uh, any errors in masking is going to show through and the blue will get through little gaps uh, if you don't uh, take care. I remember doing the 45 foot launch thinking it was all masked off and then when I took the masking off there was a, f a tiny little space where the paint had got through and it just creates more work. So go over, get the blue mixed and get that boat painted. Right, so that's the navy blue on. We'll see how we've done. See, I didn't let that mask all dry. So while I'm waiting for that mask all to dry around the prop shafts I'll just do the detail painting of the cabin. So I've got a couple of benches in there and then we can think about putting the glazing in. I'm just going to use some of the deck tan for these benches. A bit awkward getting into this one. Okay, that's all I want to do with that. I'm hoping that this mask all will come off without doing any damage. So just one or two tiny touch-ups with that, with the white. The good thing about this lacquer paint as well from Tamiya is that it uh, it blends really well. Okay, I'm going to need to come back to the white to do the fair leads on the deck here. But uh, we'll get it assembled first. So I'll just uh, 
got the bottom boards in there with a bit of a push fit but I might just put a drop of extra thin just at the front we're not going to be able to see that it's hidden under the top deck but it'll just stop it slipping around now I want to fit the top deck and I'll use some thick CA for this the thick CA just gives a bit of time to locate the part I will just run around the edge of this and onto the top rubbing strip with this uh, deck red colour. It'll just end up taking more than one coat probably to do this. Or maybe not. Seems to be going on all right. These boats all get a coat of matte varnish when they're finished and that just equalizes everything and it just levels the finish up a little bit okay so i'm hoping now that i can get this cabin in without doing too much damage It has scraped the paint up a little bit, but that's not going to be a problem. I maybe should have glazed, glazed that before fitting it. But I don't want to take it out again now. So I'll see if we can get some of this glazing material in. If not, I'm going to have to take a chance and pull the and pull it out again. All I'm going to be able to do is put some of the MIG Ultra Glue, which is this acrylic glue. And I'll just have to put a drop of this in the corners of the glazing where I've managed to get it into position. I don't know whether I can see that, but uh, it's definitely there. Maybe the light's not catching properly. Well, it's there, you just can't see it, which is a bit odd. Maybe the side ones will show a bit better. So we have got that one in, and you can see that there is something in there. So I've managed to get that glazing in. I made life hard for myself really doing it that way. I should have remembered to fit the glazing before I put the cabin in. Uh, but once I'd done the cabin, I daren't take it out again. The fit is so tight that uh, I think I would have done more damage. So I've just struggled for uh, 20 minutes or so getting this glazing in, but it's in now. And I think it's always worth doing on these boats. You can just see there on the front screen just the reflection of the glazing in the windows. I've used crystal clear for the windscreen at the front and I'm hoping that that's going to hold up. Uh, the windows on this part are much smaller than on the main cabins so I'm just hopeful that that's going to work. So we shall see about that. Um, now I just want to do some final detail painting of the fittings on the deck. 
There's the fair leads and a couple of bollards at the back. Okay, so I need to fit the propellers. So with this, I just want to get the tiniest amount of glue on the end of the propeller shaft. So I really need to get this boat onto its crutches because those propellers are obviously exposed at the bottom now. I can't sit it down. So I'm going to have to go ahead and fit the crutches. And again, I'll be using the MIG glue for this. The main reason for using the MIG is if I make a mistake, uh, I can just wash it off without doing any uh, real damage. We've got some little cutouts on the crutch that enables you to fit it around the prop shaft. I just glue the center pad on these. They're not, uh, it's not as visible if you do that. The outside ones you can see, but the inner ones not. The front one of these goes a long way forward. It's really almost at the bow. Just leave that now to set. And then obviously we can turn the thing over and fit the windscreen. And the crystal clear has worked on that, which is good. I didn't want to have to try and fit acetate into there. I've fitted the, you can see that I've fitted the wheel inside on the bulkhead. So we're nearly there with this one. So that's the Admiral's barge finished. It's come out pretty well. The uh, did have a bit of an issue here. I don't know whether you, you might remember that earlier on in the video I was a bit concerned about the height of the uh, bottom boards down here uh, and when I came to fit them I got them down as far as I could but what it meant was that when I fitted the windscreen uh, the windscreen was far too prominent so what I've had to do is go back in and take a piece off the bottom of the windscreen part. So the bulkhead all the way down to the bottom. Uh, and I've just removed the bottom a couple of millimetres from that. And it's just dropped the windscreen down to uh, a better height. It's possible that these uh, cabins are a little bit high as well. You can see it's not just quite touching uh, down here at the bottom. But uh, apart from that, I'm going to leave that as it is. I'm not going to start messing about with it. I'm likely to do more damage than good. 
So uh, that's another boat done, the Admiral's barge in this case. That'll go into storage with the ones that I made last week and we'll fit them all together uh, at some stage when all the boats are done. Okay, so that's the Admiral's barge all finished. I'll be giving that a coat of varnish along with the other motorboats when I get those done over the weekend. So I've still got another three 25 foot boats to make and a couple more of the 35 foot uh, motorboats as well. So I'll be doing those as I said over the weekend and I'm going to post uh, the progress with those uh, as extra videos during the week next week. Uh, the catch up on the motorboats will be part 36 but next Friday in part 37 I'll be moving on to the quarter deck fittings so that's all the hatches and vents and also the uh, four very prominent ladders which went up to the quarter deck screens. So something a little bit different moving on from uh, the last two or three weeks on all of these boats. So an extra video coming up next week uh, finishing off the boats and then Regular Friday we'll be doing the quarter deck. So that's it for now everybody. Uh, I hope to see you again next week. In the meantime, enjoy your modelling if that's what you're doing and stay safe. I'll catch up with you all in another seven days. So bye for now.